Let's rewind the clock. It's 2020. Minecraft is experiencing growth it has not seen in years. Tens of thousands of new players are playing the game and thousands of older players are returning to it. After a slew of successful updates, 1.13, 1.14 and 1.15, Mojang drops at the time the biggest Minecraft update ever, 1.16, a complete nether overhaul. The update is an overwhelming success and to date is regarded by many as the most well-rounded and complete Minecraft update. Mojang were widely praised for their outstanding efforts and the hype train didn't stop there, as only a few months later the most anticipated Minecraft update of all time would be announced, the cave update. And oh boy was it set to be amazing. But fast forward a few years to now, 2024, and Minecraft 1.17, the caves and cliffs update, is remembered for a very different reason. Mojang's reputation is no longer the same as it was mere years ago, and the remnants of 1.17, Minecraft's biggest update in 15 years, still linger. Today we'll talk about how Minecraft's biggest update was also Mojang's biggest mistake. So it's mid-2020, we are fresh off the back of 1.16, the nether update, an update which completely revamped the nether, making it feel fresh, new and exciting. However, little did players know what update was in store for them next. First though, have you ever wanted to easily play Minecraft on your phone as you go? Well, look no further, as today's sponsor, the new Red Magic 9 Pro, the phone from the future, will have you covered. Here I am playing Minecraft Bedrock on my server, which is notoriously laggy due to all the entities that spawn, and yet the phone is easily getting not only 60 FPS, but well into the hundreds. We can even use the phone's special triggers to bind the jump and attack buttons so we can play even more comfortably. And if we want to play true Minecraft, we can download Pojav Launcher and play Java Edition once again with over 100 FPS, no issue, on the phone's 120Hz refresh rate display. Minecraft isn't the only game you can play on the go either, as the Red Magic 9 Pro has a special gaming mode function called the Game Space, where you can basically turn your phone into a customizable gaming powerhouse, allowing you to configure game performance and download game-specific plugins unavailable anywhere else. You can even modify game-specific settings from within each game Game, it's highly configurable and powerful. Now, besides being fantastic for gaming, the Red Magic 9 Pro also has by far the biggest battery at 6,500 milliamps, almost double any of the other latest phones, has 512 gigabytes of storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM, almost as much as my PC, and my favorite thing of all, a headphone jack. That's rare. The phone is incredibly sleek as well. The front camera is entirely hidden and doesn't obstruct the display, and the high quality 50 megapixel back camera has no bumps and doesn't stick out at all like many other phones, which is super cool. You even get a cool customizable anime girl assistant. It just gets better and better. Check out their official website for their special 6th anniversary event below. Anyways, players were satisfied with 1.16. They got exactly what was promised and more. So you can imagine that only a few months later during Minecraft Live, upon hearing the announcement of the game's next update, the Caves and Cliffs update, players were ecstatic. Oh. Yes, Holy well, shit! Here. I mean, this ah! Oh my god. I did not expect this much to be added. Not gonna lie. Dan said what everyone was thinking, quite foreboding as a matter of fact. The amount of content this update promised to include seemed utterly insane. Not only was there going to be a huge cave overhaul, quite literally the most requested Minecraft update of all time, which players had been asking for for 10 years, but there was also a huge terrain overhaul, cave biomes, the warden, skulk, archaeology, I mean each of these features alone could have been an update in themselves and players would have been happy. This was incredible, we had just gotten the biggest Minecraft update ever, and now we were going to get an even bigger one that made the nether update look small by comparison. And not only that, but it was the most anticipated and requested Minecraft update of all time. Surely it was too good to be true, right? 
Right. In April of 2021, roughly six months after the announcement of Minecraft 1.17, a video and blog post would be released from Mojang stating that the Caves and Cliffs update was going to be split into two different updates. One of the updates would release around the middle of the year when the entire update was meant to come out and the rest would be released at the end of the year. The main reasons for the delay they cited were the technical challenges and complexity that came with many of the key features of the update, such as the revamped terrain generation. Generation. Concerns about the game's performance with large world generation changes were also present. It's also tricky for performance reasons because uh, there's just more going on when the world is higher. So we've decided that we don't want to rush this. We want to make sure that we give this the time it deserves. But mainly, it's the fact that the amount of content the team would have to add simply wouldn't be feasible in the time frame they first set. So basically, the first update would primarily contain the groundwork for the second update, focusing on new additions such as blocks and mobs, and the second would focus on the larger, more technical changes like world generation and caves. However, one highly anticipated feature which would not be in either update but would be indefinitely postponed was archaeology as it was a new system which required a lot of work and Mojang clearly didn't have the time to focus on it. And while understandably players were disappointed the update would take a few extra months to arrive, most were very understanding and positive. Mojang's reputation at this time was stellar. Their last few updates were all great and players understood that this update was on a whole different scale. This comment on a post about the delay summarizes it well. I'm really impressed at a lot of these more recent updates. I've said, whoa, this is the most significant update the game has had quite a few times now. Players are patient, 1.17 releases, then 1.18 eventually comes out at the end of the year. But this is where things began to go wrong. Okay, so just before Minecraft 1.18 would release, during Minecraft Live 2021, it was announced that another feature from Caves and Cliffs would be delayed, this time a much more anticipated one, the Warden and the Deep Dark. Minecraft 1.19, the wild update, would not only contain a revamped swamp biome, but also the Warden and its new structure, Ancient Cities. They've moved the Deep Dark into this update. Can you talk to us more about why? One of the biggest things about the Deep Dark and the Warden and the Skull because that it's just expanded, it's gotten bigger, and we've we really wanted to make sure that we did this right and that we didn't just rush it. As stated by the lead developer of The Warden and The Deep Dark, King B Dogs, The Deep Dark and its features had gotten more advanced, and rather than rush it out in an already delayed update, they're going to delay it to 1.19 and make it one of the update's core features. Once again, players were disappointed at the now second delay on Caves and Cliffs features, but still quite understanding, aided by the fact that the Deep Dark had seemingly got much more interesting than when it was first showcased. It's important to note though, that players will only tolerate a certain number of delays in game development, and by this point, it had been a year since the Warden's first announcement, and now players were told they were going to have to wait another eight months to finally see the Warden in game. As much as it was entirely reasonable that the Warden would be delayed, unfortunately, the general masses aren't going to be as understanding. It's a very fine line. But ironically, the Warden delays wouldn't be the only issue with 1.19. No, far from it. Besides the deep dark, the other half of the update, putting the wild in wild update, was obviously the new mangrove swamp biome, as well as a really beautiful update to the birch forest showcased in this concept art. However, as the months went on, almost zero information was revealed about the birch forest or the announced fireflies. Then, in May of 2022, during an official Mojang Q&A, it was confirmed that fireflies would not be added to the game because fireflies are poisonous to frogs in real life. Yeah, the stupidest reason ever. This is a game, remember. You know what else is poisonous to frogs? A diamond sword to their face, but we aren't removing swords from the game now, are we? Furthermore, Birch Forest was stated to be simply a concept that Mojang had decided to no longer work on and weren't going to add either. At Minecraft Live, we did show some concept art with Birch Forest improvements. However, concept art is not the commitment, and this time around, Birch Forest improvement is not something that we have continued working with. This was not received well at all, just look at all the dislikes on this video, and the comments would begin echoing a sentiment the community would begin sharing a lot over the coming months. This doesn't even feel like a world update anymore. And not only that, but remember archaeology and bundles? Yeah, about them. They were not mentioned at all, features which were meant to be released almost two years ago by this point. I told you earlier how players can only take so many delays and feature cancellations, even if they are reasonable, before getting fed up. 
Well, with this video, the Minecraft community had officially surpassed this point, and now they had grown upset, disappointed, and frustrated. 1.19 marked the real turning point in Mojang's widely perceived reputation, and was the straw that broke the camel's back. After 1.19's release, the notions that Mojang is lazy, Mojang don't listen to the community, if mods can do it, why can't Mojang, became a lot more prevailing. And the saddest thing is that despite the fact that 1.19 was still a very great update, this all only happened because of one mistake in one Minecraft update that was the catalyst. Let me explain. Let's once again go back to 2020, when Minecraft 1.17 was first announced, but now this is an alternate timeline. In this alternate timeline, instead of 78% of my viewers not being subscribed, only 22% weren't. No pressure, of course. Anyways, in this alternate timeline, instead of all the delayed features being announced here as they were for us, in this timeline, Mojang announced everything but the Warden, Skulk, and Archaeology. They also said in this Minecraft Live that because the changes to Caves and World Generation were so big and technical that this update would be released in two parts throughout next year. That was all. Now, if this happened, despite many features not being announced, players would still have been just as excited about this update. What you have to understand is that even if the update only contained cave and terrain changes, that would still make it by far the biggest update Minecraft would have ever received. Players would have been immensely happy. In addition, in this alternate timeline, rather than the wild update's only new or non-delayed feature being the mangrove swamps and a few mobs, the wild update would be the first time the players would hear about the warden. As such, even with the birch forest and firefly cancellation, players would have still been overjoyed. If it wasn't for the fact that the warden was delayed twice, 1.19 would have been regarded as one of the top 5 Minecraft updates ever. You have to remember that while players were disappointed with features cancelled in 1.19, objectively this update still added some of the most fresh, unique, and cool content of any. I mean just compare 1.19 with 1.14, the village and pillage update, or 1.15, the bees update, both positively received updates, and 1.19 easily blows them both out of the water. What I'm trying to say is that 1.17, 1.18, and 1.19 were all objectively top level updates despite their delays and cancellations, and the only reason they ended up souring Mojang's reputation and upsetting players was because Mojang were too ambitious and overpromised. If there were never any delays, but instead the features were just planned to release at later times, I'd wager that the community at large would still have had the same extremely positive opinion of Mojang as they did back during 1.16, rather than the more negative one they do now. In retrospect, some tiny and reasonable mistakes that occurred all the way back in 2020 during the announcement of 1.17 were the catalyst for almost everything that would disappoint players in the future. But is Mojang truly blameless here? After the controversy surrounding the world update, Minecraft developer King B Dogs, in discussions surrounding how Mojang would be changing their approach with 1.20, mentioned that the Nether update was one of the most stressful updates the team had ever developed and was not sustainable, requiring the team to overwork. As I mentioned, up to that point, 1.16 was the game's biggest update. So the question is, if 1.16 was already an immense challenge to release, why would Mojang announce an update with two to three times more content right after, knowing how much greater trouble it would be? I guess we won't ever know, as we aren't Minecraft developers and there was probably more going on behind the scenes that influenced their decisions, but regardless, this was a huge error on Mojang's part here. They seemingly did not learn from 1.16 and instead tried to step things up a few notches, despite it not being feasible in the time frame they set. Although let's look at it from another angle. Updates since 1.13 had ramped up in quality and quantity, and maybe Mojang felt so much pressure to surpass 1.16 that they thought they needed to add an immense amount of content to 1.17. Or maybe because this was the cave update, the most anticipated Minecraft update ever, they were worried about under-delivering and wanted to add as much as possible to ensure players were happy. Whatever the reason, it was unfortunately the big fatal mistake for Mojang that nobody really could have foreseen. The 1.17 to 1.19 Caves and Cliff Saga left its mark, and that mark was immediately noticeable with 1.20. Mojang no longer wanted to announce a theme for the next update, not even naming it until much later due to their overpromises in the past, and as such, 1.20 was seen as really underwhelming. The features announced in Minecraft Live for 1.20 were perceived as okay additions, but simply just not that interesting. As a result of 1.17 and Mojang understandably not wanting Wanting to receive backlash for overpromising again, the updates were not given a theme until much later, and less features were showcased at Minecraft Live, making the updates seem very random.
random and directionless to players. It's very easy to get hyped about a nether update, a cave update, or the warden and the deep dark. It's much harder to get hyped for camels and the cherry blossom biome, features which you may not even interact with when playing. When you loaded up a new world in the nether update or the cave update, you would immediately be surrounded with the new content, making the game feel alive, exciting, and new. When you loaded up a new world in 1.20, things would basically be the same. The lack of direction in 1.20 really killed any hype it could build, as the additions, while all decent by themselves, didn't feel connected or related to each other at all. The other issue was that while 1.20 was still a decent update, compared to the past few updates, it looked really boring by comparison. It's really hard to compete with huge terrain changes, new caves, ancient cities, and the Warden, with just camels and archaeology, which was meant to be a feature of a previous update. And yes, after about three years, archaeology, the final delayed feature from 1.17, would be added to the game, concluding that saga. 1.20 just wasn't that interesting when compared to the game's past few updates, and in a way, Mojang had spoiled the players, and had set the bar too high for each new update. Going back to Minecraft 1.13 in 2018, and it seemed that almost every update was one-upping the last, continuing to increase players' expectations from Mojang. But then 1.17 was far too great of a leap or step up, and now nothing will live up to it, leaving players in a perpetual state of why can't updates be good like they once were. If Caves and Cliffs never promised so much and then under-delivered, but instead its delayed content was always planned to release in later updates, players would never have lost as much trust in Mojang, and maybe today's updates would be more exciting because Mojang wouldn't be so concerned about backlash. 1.17 The Caves and Cliffs update, which took three years for all of its promised features to finally make it into the game, has forever left its mark on Minecraft, not only being too hard to surpass, but also being the catalyst that led to trust and confidence in Mojang decreasing. Minecraft's biggest update was also Mojang's biggest mistake, and while it wasn't intentional and nobody really could have predicted the many delays and issues the update would face, it is now an update forever staining the legacy of Minecraft. Make sure to check out Red Magic's 6th anniversary celebrations with this link here. Be sure to subscribe, thank you all so much for watching.